Hello community. Today we create a synthetic data set for fine tuning a Llama 2 model. And this data set is created by GPT-4 for the application of fine tuning a Llama 2 model. And of course we want to make it a little bit challenging. So we create the synthetic data set with one single prompt. Now, since we want also that the whole code runs on a free Colab notebook, so we have to use all the tricks that we know to reduce the memory footprint. So we're going to use PATH, our parameter efficient fine tuning. And we choose one methodology and we go with LoRa, the low rank matrix approximation for high dimensional tensor structure. And of course, we use a quantization. And since we want to run maybe on a free call of notebooks on a T4 GPU from NVIDIA, we have to reduce from an 8-bit to a 4-bit quantization of all our weight tensors. Of course, we will use here the transformer-based reinforcement learning and our good old script by hugging face for a supervised fine-tuning. Now, if this is all done, we have to result a fine-tuned Llama 2 model for a specific user-defined task. Now, if you have any questions, those are my videos. I have here a coding video on PATH where LoRa in 8-bit. If you want to go to a quantized LoRa in 4-bit, this is the video. We will not use any lang chain because we will do everything here in a more intelligent way. And if you have questions about reinforcement learning, this is the video for you. This reinforcement learning, of course, includes robotics, but never mind, it is also valid for only a large language model and not a visual language action robotics model. So here we go. What I want is I have one primary prompt, then I have one script. This All of this is one code, one code script I'm going to show you. And the result is an inference system ready. So we have a fine-tuned Llama 2 system that is fine-tuned for a very narrow, specific task. And the task is defined in my one prompt. So we have now an agglomeration here of intelligence that I just have to input one prompt and I get out a complete fine-tuned Llama 2 system for the task that I define in the prompt. What do you think? An example, I say, hey, fine tune a Llama 2 model on the latest scientific data of all the planets in our solar system. So maybe activate an agent to collect all the internet data from NASA or you know, the European Space Agency. And right here with another agent or with a pure Llama 2, a short science fiction story on an adventure traveling from Marco to Ganymede, but based on the real scientific data on the atmosphere, on the temperature, on the hard radiation level of each of the different planets, plus activate a fact checking agent when we have here our agent write the science fiction story. So you see, this is a simple thing, or you can use it for some business application. I mean, if you are without any fantasy, you use it for business. So what do you think? We write now the code. So this is here our Jupyter Notebook by Matt Schumer. I give you the link in the description of this video, download it and follow along. So we do everything and today we want to fine tune our Llama 2 model. In my last video, I showed you the same where we fine tuned here our chat GPT model from OpenAI. That is now also possible. But a lot of questions said, hey, what about Llama 2? How to do this? Let's do it. Ah, I have a V100 high RAM GPU. Great. So at first, our primary prompt, I told you. What is the specific task? And I take the same prompt like in my last video, so you can compare here fine tuning ChatGPT to fine tuning Llama 2. Say a model that takes in a puzzle like reasoning heavy question in English and responds in a well reasoned step by step sort out response in Spanish. As I told you last time, we go from a temperature from zero to one. So we have a very imaginative to a very fact based temperature. And the number of examples that it will create, let me set it to 100. This is the minimum set. We go here with the Llama 2 version. So we have here now, and we ask GPT-4. So this is why we need the OpenAI API key. So we use here the 
OpenAI API interface to, where is it? Here, chat completion, OpenAI create, we use the GPT-4 model and we have here our messages. Now, we define now the data set, no, GPT-4 creates the data set based on our system prompt. And here we have our prompt. So, of course, we address the system and says, hey, GPT-4, listen, you are generating data, which will be used to train a machine learning model. You will be given a high level description of the model we want to train. And from that, you will generate data samples, each with a prompt response pair. So this is exactly what we need. We need fine tuning data samples. And we don't, either we have it, which would be great, so you can skip this. But if you have no data, but you want for a specific task, the GPT-4 creates data and GPT-4 knows, let's say the complete internet, respecting all intellectual property rights, of course, this will be done. We define the format. You will do this in the format. Prompt, prompt goes here, response, response goes here. So only one prompt response pair should be generated by turn. We should. We really want GPT-4 to focus on this thing. And for each turn, make it slightly more complex than the last while ensuring diversity. This is the same like last time. Here's the type of the model we want to train, and this is the prompt. Great. So we have our example. We have here GPT-4. We have the things, and we generate this. Great. Next, OpenAI, this generate system message, create GPT-4 or any other model that you want, but GPT-4 is really good at reasoning and performing the task. The you will be given a high-level description of the model we are training, and from that, you will generate a simple system prompt for that model to use. So we are not anymore generating here a system message for data generation. No, we are now generating a system message to use for inference. And of course, we have to define the format. Make it as concise as possible. Include nothing but a system prompt in response. For example, right here, so we give him a one-shot example. Great, you can set the temperature and the max token. Yes, yes, yes. Now we put everything into a Panda data frame because we want to create a JSON file that we will use later on. So we create a data frame, we remove the duplicates, you know this. And then of course, as the classical way forward, we have our training data set and we said, okay, we want to split the data in the training data set and the test data set. Maybe you use an evaluation data set or whatever. So then we have here our data sets, and then we say here our training uh, Panda data frame to JSON or our test data frame Panda data frame to JSON, and we have our two JSON files. Great. Now I told you not GPT or Chat GPT, but now we go here with Llama 2. So we're gonna use every trick in the box that we know. We're gonna use Accelerate from Hugging Face. We use Peft in the latest version. Bits and Byte, please update to the latest version. Our beautiful transformer and our transformer-based reinforcement learning algorithm. We import everything, beautiful. LoRa configuration, Peft model, supervised fine-tuning trainer from Hugging Face. Everything is here. Now, simple term we use here from Hugging Face, a Llama 2 model. Since we want to run here in a free Jupyter notebook, we go with the smallest 7B. If you want to spend some money, please update here to bigger models. And we have here now all the LoRa parameters. We say, hey, use 4-bit equal true. And you might say, are you sure? Not 8-bit. We really go down to 4-bit. Are you really sure? And I tell you, yes, because 4-bit, it is short, it is fast, it is quick. Maybe not as precise as 8-bit, but here we are just going here as a demonstration. We have here, as I showed you already in my video here, about 4-bit quant quantized LoRa. Here a specific quantization type and a 4. What else? Device per train. Yes, yes, yes. You have your learning rate, your weight decay, everything that you optimize. If you want to deep dive and modify this parameter, if you're an expert, go for it. If you are a newbie, just leave the default parameter. They are done by an expert. Great. So as always, as we train a data set, we said, hey, let's load the data set. Let's pre-process our data set. 
Let's have here our bits and bytes configuration in 4-bit, yes, yes, yes. And then, like in the stone age of programming, we say here, hugging face, our transformer model, auto model for causal language model from pre-trained, our model name, our quantization, our BNB configuration, the device map. And you know all of this. Now, nice, of course, let me make this here is the tokenizer. From pre-trained everything, trust remote code is true. The padding, yes, beautiful. We use here in English the right padding size. And then we have the path configuration, beautiful. Training parameters, the same as I told you. If you're an expert, dive in, modify, optimize the code to your delight. Otherwise, just go with the default value. We define here our hugging face trainer, our supervised fine tuning trainer that we have here the model, we have the training data set, the evaluation data set, we have the path configuration. We have here the maximum length, we have our tokenizer, we have defined our training arguments and beautiful. So go and train it, beautiful. And then we save our pre-trained new model, great. And of course, as I told you last time, there's a little bit of difference if you fine tune chat GPT or you fine tune Llama 2. And here we go with the Llama 2 output. And that's it. Now, what we do now, run inference, and you're going to say, unbelievable, is it that easy? We use here the pipeline, we go really simple, yes. You merge the model and store it in the Google Drive, if you want, beautiful, reload the model and merge it with the lower rates, beautiful, reload the tokenizer, yes, save the merged model, beautiful. Load the find your model from drive and run inference. We have here our classical commands, auto model for causal language from pre-trained model path and the auto tokenizer from pre-trained model path. You know this and we are ready to go. And now you see my prompt now is explain quantum entanglement to a 75 year old professor of theoretical physics and mathematics. And you say, go. And no, no, this is the wrong approach because remember, we did the fine tuning of Llama 2 for a very specific task. Remember, our primary prompt was here a model that takes in a puzzle like, reasoning heavy question in English and responds with a well reasoned, step by step, sort out response in Spanish. So, what I go here, this I would go here for a normal chat system, for a normal blah 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 system. But no, we have a fine-tuned Llama 2 and fine-tuned to this specific task. So please do not make the mistake and go with this general prompt. But your prompt, of course, has to be in line with the primary prompt. Take in a question about a puzzle-like reasoning heavy question in English and you get a step-by-step -step result in Spanish. I will leave you the link to this complete Jupyter Notebook in the description of the video. All the rights and all the respect go to Matt Schumer. This is his Twitter account. I also leave you the description to his GitHub repo. Try out here fine-tuning Llama 2. And by the way, by the way, if you have your data set, great. You do not need to generate here a, a synthetic GPT-4 generate the data set, but you start here, you say, hey, install my libraries, you go here with Llama 2, you define your hyperparameters, watch out that the format of your data set is fitting, is equivalent to the input that you need here for Llama 2, for your training data set. And then you just, if you want, copy the code, go and run with it, experience yourself, optimize, learn, make it better. And if you have some great ideas, please leave a comment here in the description of this video and share your insight with the community. I hope it was a little bit informative for you. Would be great if you have some feedback. And if not, maybe I see you in my next video.